All right, we'll get a closer look at the state of the AI trade when NVIDIA reports earnings tomorrow afternoon. It's the main event of the week, maybe even the year. For more on the tech landscape, I'm joined by Keith Kirkpatrick, research lead at the Futurum Group. Keith, thanks so much for joining the show. Great to have you here. Thanks for having me. All right, so I know you're also going to be looking at Microsoft following its uh, Ignite conference, but uh, I want to get your take sure. on the overall tech sector, obviously leading into NVIDIA's results. Tomorrow, we've seen uh, you know it really take the lead. We have seen some broadening out, but overall, are you looking at big tech as uh, what's going to continue to power this market higher? Yeah, you know, it, you can't avoid AI right now, right? I mean, it's all over the place. I think where, what we're starting to see in the market is moving from this idea of AI as sort of a general purpose tool to really looking at how it can be used to address specific use cases and, as I'll get into a little bit later, looking at how this new technology called AI agents, really, which are these autonomous agents that actually can make decisions, uh, I really expect that to start to really move the market because you're going to actually be able to deliver real ROI from your AI investments. Well, Dan Ives over at Wedbush loves to talk about the AI party just getting started. Where do you think we mm -hmm. are in the this, you know, in terms of what stage of the AI revolution do you think we're in? We're still in the very, you know, to use a baseball analogy, we're probably in the second inning or so. Uh, if you think about the market and what we've already been able to accomplish, it's been very nice in sort of a pilot or demonstration phase. What we're really going to start to see over the next few months and years is the application of AI to address specific cases. So, you know, uh, we'll talk a little bit about it later in terms of what we heard uh, out of Microsoft. But if you think about what AI is being used to do, they're actually being used to uh, do things like go in and enable folks to query their data in their systems instead of having to go through a more traditional interface. Uh, it's going to be able to do things like create on the fly interpretations of languages. These are all things that are really, you know, game changers in terms of improving productivity, making okay. it just easier to interact with others in the, in the market. Okay, so we've been talking about Microsoft. We've been talking about talking about Microsoft, so let's actually talk about it. Uh, it you know, shares sure. basically flat. Uh, there's been some big announcements coming out of the Ignite conference. I believe that kicked off today. It's going this week. Uh, what have we learned so far, and uh, why isn't it really impressing investors? Well, I think there's a couple things. Uh, any kind of, first of all, I don't think it's impressing investors right now because. You know, if you've been following Microsoft, they, like any other vendor, has been talking about AI for the past 18 months. Uh, the announcements that, that they made are interesting. Uh, they talked about the launch of Microsoft Copilot Studio. This is sort of a management console for creating and managing agents, uh, which I mentioned again, are these AI assistants that are grounded within company data to help actually accomplish very specific tasks. These things are certainly really interesting. I expect they will deliver value, but I think a lot of companies right now, and perhaps even investors, are taking a bit of a wait and see approach until they actually uh, enter general production and deliver results. So if you take a look at Microsoft shares, they're, as I said, flat today, but only up about 11% year to date, only up about the same 10.5% over the past one year. So underperforming uh, some of its MAG7 peers or all of its MAG7 peers and the overall, you know, uh, NASDAQ, if you will. So is it Copilot that's going to help it uh, pick up some steam and catch up or what is it? Well, that's what they're hoping. They're hoping that uh, the agent strategy that they're really starting to embrace to actually de deliver results will help them actually generate more revenue that can be attributed to AI. If you think about Microsoft over the past year or two years, they've invested very, very heavily in AI technology. It's just, you know, I think it's going to be something where it takes time in order to have that translate into actual revenue. One of the other things that's really interesting about what they're doing is they are, if you look at one of their competitors, Salesforce, uh, Salesforce has leaned very, very heavily into AI, you know, talking about using a different type of pricing model, looking at consumption-based pricing. So you basically, uh, you know, pay for the amount of compute that you use to run that AI. Microsoft has talked a little bit about that, but they're still sort of sticking with this approach of saying, well, 
we are going to charge users an extra fee for access to this AI technology. And I think that's how they're trying to generate more revenue that can be directly tied back to what they're doing with AI. Okay, so you talk about this shift from general you know, purpose AI to more specific use cases. How do you think that will play out in terms of the, the beneficiaries that we're still talking about, say, next year, and uh, some of the trends you, we can expect to see when it comes to the early innings, the second inning, as you said, uh, of the AI yeah. space kind of broadening out? Well, I think what we're going to start to see here is as these AI agents start to get uh, deployed outside of pilot programs, actually into production, you're going to start to see real uh, return on investment generated. You're going to see efficiency gains that can be tracked back to real costs. If you figure something like if you used to have a human take uh, you know, eight to 10 hours per week to go through a number of different systems and you can eliminate that, you know, it's simple math. You multiply their hourly costs by the amount of hours and you can see that if it costs, I'm just throwing out numbers here, uh, $5,000 and you're only paying you know, a few hundred for that agent, that's real revenue uh, that is saved. And with that, Microsoft, along with a lot of the other companies, are hoping that you're, you're going to say, hey, this is worth it to actually invest in this technology. All right. Well, Microsoft shares up about two tenths of a percent right now, still trading about 11 percent from the highs. Keith Kirkpatrick, research lead at the Futurum Group. Thanks so much for sharing your insights. Really appreciate it.